Today's agenda, we'll be focusing on the orientation for the course before we start getting into the details of the course itself. We need to note that from time to time, we'll, we'll implement the Zoom software in order to come together in a synchronous format to discuss any items that need discussing, answer any questions, and things of that nature. During this orientation, I want to go over introductions. I will introduce myself, and for the students, you should have introduced yourself primarily using the Welcome to the Course uh, discussion form listed uh, at the beginning of the course. We'll then look at the syllabus walkthrough, looking at key information, such as locate for information, talking about Zoom meetings and recorded meetings as well, recorded lectures. Then we'll look at the Canvas unit run through, giving you a snapshot of what you need to do when you go into the Canvas site by going to modules and then selecting the unit uh, pages. And then I'll have an opportunity for you to ask me questions by establishing another discussion forum specifically for this orientation. So again, we're not using Zoom at the moment, but when we do get a chance to use Zoom, please be advised of the screenshot we have here. At the far left, we have the mute, followed by the stop video. Then after security, we have participants, and then we have the chat buttons. The mute will allow you to mute or unmute yourself. Audio can be heard or not heard, depending on your preference. And stop video. Uh, this is set for the video to be shown so that if you have a webcam or some system like a camera that's connected to your computer, then the video of you will be shown. Otherwise, you can stop it. And you can also chat to the instructor by selecting the chat button. And you may be able to select chat with other students as well if that's set. I'm not sure if it is right now. So, quick introductions. Uh, my name is Anthony Hubert. I'm a doctor of psychology. The focus of my psychology and my training is in social psychology as well as industrial organizational psychology. And we'll learn about both those particular areas as we go through the material over the next few weeks. I'm a native of North Carolina, specifically from Raleigh, North Carolina. My major, of course, when I was an undergraduate was psychology. And I've worked at a variety of uh, venues. I've worked with the uh, Navy as a post-grad from a master's program. I've also served as a consultant for several years with Michigan, uh, Michigan's Ford Motor Company, as well as International Truck and Engine Corporation. Now let's begin with the walkthrough of the syllabus. So first, as is the case for all the syllabi that I'm sure you've seen, it's very systematic and very standardized as the way information is being presented to you. What I've done for this presentation, however, is I've taken little screenshots of the particular sections of the syllabi so that we can look at them uh, in a PowerPoint format. So let's look at location information. Uh, this course, Psych 210, DO5, and DO6, are general psychology courses. These psychology courses are used as a gateway to additional psychology courses uh, that you may be interested in, particularly if you are a student in the psychology program. Many other people will take general psychology primarily because it is a requirement for many programs, at least to take the very first general psychology class. I am located in the Butler Building on the second floor, room 241A in the suite of offices. And of course, this particular term, Fall 2020, I will not be located there. My office will be virtual. This is a three credit hour course. Appointments will be made, but also I will be available for the most part Wednesdays between 4 and 6 p.m. You can use your phone to call me. Uh, the phone number here is for the office number, but it is forwarded to me so I can get your phone call. This class is being offered only online. 
there are no components of this class that will require face-to-face -face meetings. Now, let's talk a little bit about Zoom meetings and recorded lectures. Zoom meetings will be scheduled at the start of each unit or module, that's the plan, and or recorded lectures provided to discuss key ideas for the unit or module. Zoom meeting access information will be provided on Canvas and sent to students' official FSU email account. The times for meetings will be announced via Canvas and email. So the basic idea here is there are going to be two things that I will be providing to you. Uh, technology gods, hopefully on our sides, will have Zoom meetings that will allow us to get together at the same time and talk about any issues that need to be discussed or answer any questions that you may have. Then we have recorded lectures. In a way, this is an example of a recorded lecture. This means there's no uh, live individuals with me. I'm in my office and I'm going to be recording this PowerPoint slide in such a way that it can eventually be loaded up onto the Canvas site for you to be able to access it at your leisure. So primarily this term, we're going to be looking at two ways in which we can sort of get together in, in a sense. The first way is going to be through Zoom meetings, which will allow us all to come together. And the second way is going to be through recorded lectures, which I will post for you and then most likely leave it in a discussion board to see if there are any questions or comments about the material that may have been uh, shown to you. So let's talk a little bit more about the course itself by looking at the course description. This course, Psych 210, is an introduction to the study of psychology as a science and the application of the scientific method and the understanding of behavior, with emphasis on such behavioral phenomena as learning, motivation, emotions, memory and problem solving, personality and development, behavior disorders, and psychotherapy. And as I stated earlier, this course is considered to be what we call a gateway course. Most often times at most universities and colleges, before you can take like a forensic psychology or developmental psychology, they want you to get the foundational information. And that's what this course serves to do, provide you with that foundational information. So once you finish successfully completing this course, then the other courses in psychology will be much more clear for you and ability for you to be able to assimilate that information more readily. The textbook for this course is Exploring Psychology by David G. Myers. It was written in 2019 and we are currently in the 11th edition. Now let's talk about the learning outcomes. What a learning outcome is basically trying to communicate to you is the following. Once you have completed a course, there are certain things that we want you to have been able to learn, to be able to accomplish, to be able to do or perform after a course has been completed. I'm just going to read a few of these real quickly here. And again, you have all this information in your syllabus. So basically, let's look at number one. Identify the major psychological principles, subfields of psychology, and approaches to understanding human behavior. Three. Summarize how individuals are influenced by culture in the presence of others. Four, recognize basic American Psychological Association publication manual formatting guidelines and their rationale. Point here. We talk about the APA format, and we're not going to go into a great deal of detail about it, but I want to be able to communicate with you so that you are able to at least recognize what some of the APA formatting entails and to be, be able to hopefully understand why we have such things as APA formatting, what's the rationale and basis behind having them. Number five, demonstrate writing skills related to the identification, 
discussion and analysis of theory and scientific findings in psychology. Again, just want to be able to see how it is that you're able to communicate some of the ideas and concepts that we learned through this course. Let's look at a couple more. Demonstrated understanding of human development and its relationship to psychological functioning. And then looking at this one, identify and or discuss issues related to basic human brain, neurological and sensory functioning. So as you can see from these learning outcomes, we'll be covering a whole variety of issues and topics in this course this semester. Now, let's talk a little bit about mastering learning outcomes. Knowing what the outcomes are is wonderful. We now know what we're shooting for for this particular semester. But students are expected to spend at least six hours a week beyond the classroom instruction on the following activities to master the course learning outcomes. One of the things I want to emphasize here if we were able to have a face-to-face -face meetings of a class and things of that nature uh, when we showed up to class and you show up every single day that is admirable and it's a wonderful thing to do but the idea it goes beyond that just showing up to class does not really get you your good decent grade there are several activities that need to go along with that so in this instance uh, in the online environment the same thing follows. We may not have the opportunity to meet face to face like we did uh, previous semester, uh, at least not at this moment anyway, but there are certain things that you need to do in order to enhance the possibility of success in class. Let's go through some of these items now. Want to read and take notes on the identified chapters of the textbook, associated supplemental lecture notes, and any supplemental reading material. So not only just to read them, but also take notes on them. This will help to solidify the information and make it more concrete for you. View and take notes on identified videos. As you'll see in this course, we will provide a bunch of videos, videos that will be aligned with the topics in the course. When you view these videos, just don't watch it like you're watching your favorite television program. Watch the video. Take notes on the video. Pause the, t the video if necessary to take notes. If you have questions about the video information that's been provided to you, uh, ask a colleague or send an email or ask the instructor. Three, gather and organize relevant information to utilize for understanding material. You are the active learner you can go out and seek additional information that's not being provided to you by the instructor or the structure of the course. Now obviously by doing that you need to make sure that you're going to the right sources, proper type of sources. And you will go through some of this information as we go through certain types of activities uh, in the course. Number four, it may be a good idea to do this. Create a summary of key points document to aid in studying for chapter quizzes and module tests. What I mean by that is as you are starting to learn and understand the material, summarize it and then put it in a document. Type it up, write it by hand, whatever the case may be, so that that will serve as a memory tool and an aid for you as well. Gather and organize relevant information for the completion of course essay assignments. So we have, I think, one essay assignment or uh, current event paper uh, doing this particular course. But as part of that, you need to be able to gather and organize the information in a very cohesive manner and clear and logical manner to make sure that you're able to communicate your understanding of that material. Six complete discussion forums and other canvas related assignments. Seven, communicate with, communicate with fellow students on identified topics via the discussion forums. Study for quizzes and tests and very importantly this last one ask questions. Now let's look at the course components. So here are the course components. 
there will be five unit exams. You'll get one attempt per unit test, and once you do start the test, you must finish it. The five unit exams will have a weight of 30% of the course. Then we have quiz homework assignments. For these quiz homework assignments, you can work on them, save them, and then resume them later before you submit them. The quiz homework assignments will have a weight of 25% of the course. Then we have participation or discussion forms and other activities. They fall into the category of 15%. And then the Psychology News Current Event Paper, which we'll talk about extensively, we'll probably have a, another orientation just for that alone a little bit later, that will also be for a total of 15%. And finally, your Comprehensive Final Exam. The Comprehensive Final Exam for this course, also known as Unit Exam Number 6, will also be worth 15 percentage points of the course for a total of 100% points for this particular course. Now let me make a sort of a clarification here about unit exam number six slash comprehensive final exam. All the exams that we would have taken in this course, let's say the five other exams, okay, items from those exams or those topical areas will be included in that comprehensive final exam. But also there's going to be other information included there as well. And that's going to be the, the, the items that we will be covering in the last unit of the course. And so we'll have a, a focus on the last unit material, but we will have information coming from the other units, the other five units that we will be covering as well. So it's a conference and final exam, but a lot more of the focus will be on unit exam number six material. Those items covered in unit number six. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit more about the discussion forms. Discussion forms, and I know a lot of students don't like them, and I can understand it does require you to uh, be very vigilant and making sure that you're staying up to date with all the discussion forms that may be available for a course. Uh, unlike many courses, uh, I don't have a lot of discussion forms. I don't necessarily have one every single week. Uh, I do have se many of them or several of them, uh, but I want to go over real quickly why we have them. Discussion forms are designed to, one, assess your ability to address and communicate on topics relevant to the diverse area of psychology. And you know, this covers one of the learning outcomes that we discussed previously. And number two, generate an exchange of ideas with your peers. Okay, so show how you're able to communicate relevant ideas and topics in psychology and show how you're able to have a dialogue between yourself and your fellow students in this particular course. Now it should be noted, just to make sure it's clear, before you read before you uh, read any post, you must post yourself. So the basic idea here is, and many other courses may do the same thing, I do them for mine, is that before you are able to read what anyone else has posted, you must post yourself. Okay. Now let's look real quickly here at the instructions for the discussion forms. First bullet item, post should be spread over several days, not all in one day. So oftentimes, sometimes we'll see it where a student comes on to the, uh, uh, the discussion form on the very last day and then does all their posts on that day. We want to avoid that. The second bullet point, you should make at least four posts and it comes down to this, one original post where you are responding to whatever the query that the, the, the question is about that discussion form and then respond to your classmate post have three responses to your the posts of your classmates. All right. Posts should be more than great posts or good job. Posts should ha be complete ideas or thoughts about what it is that they said, if you agree with it, uh, if you have something you want to add to it, or if you disagree with it, which is also possible as well. And then be sure to address the questions asked and or follow the instructions provided. Be sure to do that. Just read the item and do what it says you're supposed to do. 
Now, going back to the second bullet really quick, you should make at least four posts. All right, this makes grading easier for me when I see at least four posts. That original post, which is addressing directly what the question was for that discussion forum, and three other responses to the posts of other people in the class. And then let's look at the discussion forum guidelines. Okay, this is just a guideline for me to help in thinking about how it is that I want to grade uh, the discussion forum post that you present to us. So first, realize that the one original post and three responses, that does count into it as well. But I want to also address a couple of other things. Are concepts clearly and adequately addressed? Were the requested items clearly and adequately answered, indicating proper understanding of this topic? Was the, uh, the item addressed in a way which indicates the effort of the writer to provide a thoughtful and considered response? Were examples provided and were instructions followed? So the basic idea here is it covers a bunch of things, but that helps give me some sort of idea of the types of things that I look for. Then obviously as well, was the writing clear and easy to follow is another key idea. I apologize, a little bit of coughing there. So is the writing clear? Was the writing clear and easy to follow? Was the writing free of obvious errors? So that gives you an idea of the types of things I'm looking for. So in sum, I'm looking for an original post, three replies to the post of others, making sure the concepts are clearly and adequately addressed and making sure the writing is clear and easy to follow. The syllabus walkthrough looking at the psychology news current event short paper. The psychology news current event assignment, okay, basically the goal of this assignment is to find current events, research, and other media that relate to the concepts of psychology and to get practice applying the concepts and communicating about them. We'll have more conversation on this a little bit later as well in a separate uh, orientation, a separate video about this particular topic. Also note that there is a sample uh, psychology news current event paper assignment uh, that is posted on your Canvas site for you to review. So when we look at the assignment for news and slash current events, I, there's a simple little quick paper rubric that I use for this assignment. Uh, and you can see it listed here. Uh, topic approved by the instructor. That's not a necessity if you use a reliable source. And that's why I have it there. Uh, the notion is I want to make sure that whatever source that you're using you're getting it from some sort of legitimate uh, place. All right. I'll be looking for properly formatted cover page, followed required paper organization, properly formatted citations and references. Just looking at the basics here. This is not going to be an APA fully formatted paper with everything, but I do want to make sure that certain ideas are being followed there. And that is one of the reasons I do have a, a sample paper listed as well. Paper free of spelling, grammatical errors. Uh, the key things that you can see here based on the points made available to it is going to be adequately introduce the article current event source, meaning you tell me where you're getting this information from. You successfully summarize the article or the current event source that you tell me where it's from. You summarize properly the source and correctly related content of the article uh, to psychological theories and or principles. So those are going to be the, the meat of it is going to be looking at you give me some really good idea of the source where you got it from. You summarize that source and then you're easily able to relate it to uh, the topic of psychology. Okay, now as we are wrapping things up a little bit here, uh, there are six units in this course. Unit one, two, three, four, five, and six. Each unit will uh, identify assigned chapters, provide lecture slides and selected video links. Each unit will include a quiz homework assignment, 
a form question or questions, and any other assignment and a unit exam. So that's going to be the flow of the course. You go through a unit, you are going to expect to see some chapter assignments as to this covers these particular chapters or this particular material. And then you'll have some assignments as well that you need to perform or to do uh, or submit uh, as you work through that particular unit. So let's look at what it looks like when you go to the Canvas When you go to the Canvas site and you select module, uh, it will take you to uh, a page where we have units listed, units 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6, and so on. Uh, currently, the only one unit, the first unit, is available to you and is currently open. You can see that it's divided up into three columns where we have week, chapter lecture notes, and then at the very far right column, we have assignments and activities, and then assignments and to-dos. So let's look at week one which covers from August 3rd to August 9th. The chapter lecture notes, so the things that we're referring to here is going to be an orientation and course introduction. We also have listed syllabus, which is a live link, which will take you to the syllabus again. All right, so that's what we're doing this first week, and that's what this presentation is actually about. It's fulfilling the need of helping you to orient to the course. To the far right under assignments and activities, you can see a big blue arrow there pointing to the Zoom meeting. Uh, that Zoom meeting was scheduled for today, uh, August 6 to 10 a.m. for this particular class. So in the future, if you want to know about Zoom meetings that may have been scheduled and they have been listed in the uh, Canvas unit here, you can click on it and get information about it. And of course, we have the discussion form for the welcome and introductions form, which I see many of you have already started uh, filling information into. In the second row, we have week number two from August 10 through the 16th. The chapters that are being covered there, we have chapter one, thinking critically with psychological science. Underneath there, we have lecture notes, and we have a blue arrow pointing to it. We have lecture notes. Myers 11th edition lecture slides for chapter one is a PDF format. So you can click on it, save it, whatever you need to do in order to have the lecture notes for that particular chapter uh, being provided to you. These are the lecture note slides that I normally will use uh, during a class, particularly a face to face class. Underneath that, we have Appendix A, Statistical Reasoning in Everyday Life. That's going to be the next main chapter that we will cover, or appendix that we'll cover, along with Chapter 1 information. So we have a busy week for Week 2, looking at August 10th through the 16th, looking at Chapter 1, as well as Appendix A on statistics. We have the slides for that listed as well. And then, just to go ahead and give us a, a heads up, we have the APA formatting handout sample. That's going to be located to the right. It's also under practice, I mean, paper topics on your uh, Canvas mains page. And then we have the sample final current event paper. So I gave you an example from a previous semester of someone's current event paper that you can look at for your own benefit. And then we have the can Canvas unit run through uh, for week number three. For week number three, we move from uh, talking about statistics and the history of psychology that we saw previously. Now in week number three, we're looking at chapter two, the biology of behavior. We have a, uh, notes for it listed under lecture notes. And then to the right, I didn't cover this previously, but to the right, we see a bunch of things listed as videos. These highlighted videos are videos I really want you to see on the nervous system, the chemical mind, split brain, brain plasticity. There's another one, a short one on brain surgery. You don't necessarily have to see that, but it's there for your benefit. And then there is another discussion form. What does split brain mean? And how are they different from non-split brain people? That particular form. Also, I want to note, too, that as you can see for week number three, as we have for the previous weeks, there's a chapter quiz available as well. Here we see chapter two quiz. So again, you can access that information 
work on it and save it and then once you're completed all the items you feel comfortable with it you can submit it and get it graded and finally we see here for August 24th uh, we have unit exam number one unit exam number one will cover a variety of topics it will cover the topic of chapter one information the history of psychology the basic foundation of psychology research methods of psychology appendix a looking at statistics and then chapter two looking at the biology of behavior so August 24th will be the due date for that particular exam it should be available to you at least a week before uh, the exam will be due so it's not always open at the very beginning of a unit but usually a week out before the exam is going to be due it should probably pop up so you have access to it all right so what we've done so far today uh, hopefully you'll get some practice if you haven't already uh, with zoom uh, I've made an introduction to you. You've made introductions online uh, with the welcome introduction to the course. We did conduct a syllabus walkthrough. We also reviewed our Canvas unit format online by doing a short little walkthrough of how we can go about looking at that little table format and accessing needed information there. So finally, Obviously, this is a, a canned type of presentation, so there's no live questions, but I will make this available tied to a uh, discussion forum. So if you do have any questions about this presentation, which I also will make available to you, uh, please post them there. All right, that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys later.